In this presentation, we will record and apply direct labor costs to jobs and to the account within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop. Here we are in our practice problem number four using the classes for our job costing system. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down and the open windows list. Let's take a look at our objective by going to the Excel sheet. We're currently going to be on the tab 1.12. Uh, and this is going to be reflecting the direct labor. So we're going to be recording the direct labor. Now, when you think about direct labor, you get similar kind of thing for a contractor or something like that. If you had contractored out 1099 W versus a W-2 employee. If we distill this down, though, to payroll, payroll in its simplest form, you'll recall it would be a debit to basically payroll expense and a credit to cash if it wasn't for all you know the other laws and withholdings and whatnot to it so if we think about that as the basic transaction then we're going to convert that to say we're not going to debit just payroll expense general but in this scenario put it to the cost of goods sold because it's part of the job we want to apply it to the job so in essence we're going to debit the uh or increase the cost of goods sold the expense the 218 increasing the 218 the other side then going to cash cash is going to be going down we then would apply that to the job that 218 we're going to apply to the jobs that are applicable for it that's going to be the 30 the 68 and the 120 so we know that directly so we could just basically assign whatever job they're tracking their time by job and that's going to be the costs uh, per job so our goal is to basically record the transaction here and also assign it to the proper job so that we can track this information by job just as we did before now also note once again that we're going to do this as one kind of number as we've done in the past direct labor and then apply it to the jobs but you could be thinking about if you're in a contractor situation similar kind of thing if you have the different kind of contractors you're going to put them under basically the labor stuff and then and then you could apply them out in a similar fashion that we did with the direct materials to different labor categories such as like the electric work or the framing or you know the utility whatever whatever you got to apply it out to so but this this one we're just going to do one you know category of the direct labor so i'm going to go back into uh quickbooks we're simply going to write a check this time we're going to write a normal check just like we normally would and we're going to go through here and the date that we want is the 12th so i'm going to make this on the 12th because that's the date we want the 12th and then we're going to i'm just going to call it employee one and it you might have three employees that work on the different jobs or you might be assigning different people if they're service contractors and paying them uh whatever you pay them you know to, to do and, and then assigning it to the job but we're just going to make this all go into this one employee we're going to set it up i'm going to set it up as a vendor i don't want to deal with the payroll in this presentation and that's it so that's what we want and the the amount i'm going to say quick add vendor okay so the amount we want is going to be for the total of the 218 so the total is going to be the 218 and then I'm just going to apply it to the job. We're on the expenses tab. We don't have to deal with the items here. It's just straightforward expenses tab. We're going to be applying them. I'm only going to apply it to this one, again, direct labor tab, which you could break out in a similar fashion as we did with the direct materials. But I'm just going to assign it to this one tab for this example. And then we're going to break it out to the three job components, which is going to be 30,000 for job number 14. So I'm going to say this is going to be 30,000. And this will be job number 14. I'm going to make this a bit larger. And then I'm going to say direct uh, labor. And this is going to be for job number 15, 68,000. So I'll make this 68,000. And that's going to be assigned to job number 15. Uh, not that way. Job number 15 there. And the job here, I'm going to assign it here too. So this will be... Uh, 14 and this is going to be 15 and the reason we want the job here is really to make it billable that's what that's what we're going to be using that'll uh, you'll see how that'll pull over to the invoice and then we're going to go to job number uh, 16 for direct labor and so here direct labor 120 that should be what we need as we can see here 120 good and we're going to say that that's going to be job number 16 and job number 16 okay and then i'm going to just copy this it's going to be the same name for all of them so i'm just going to copy this it doesn't want to let me do it but 
there we go no problem all right so there it is so then i'm going to say save and close what's this going to do when we record it it's a check therefore it's going to be decreasing the cash account the other side then is going to be going to the expense account which is going to be the direct labor a cost of goods sold type of account that is then under the subcategory of a labor account and then it'll assign it for our classes which we're going to run with the profit and loss by class report to the proper class so we'll say uh and just just to note here like what's really nice about this is, is if you mess something up let's say i forgot to assign a class here and i say ah, i didn't i forgot to assign let's see what that'll do if i say save and close yes and then save it it basically and it gave me that that warning right there that something didn't have a class and so if i was to heed that warning i would have found it there but i'm going to then go to the reports drop down we're going to go first to the accounting and taxes and the trial balance let's open up the trial balance and change the dates from 010120 to 123120 and there we have our our information here now if we want to see the more detail on it then we can go to the profit and loss reports drop down we're going to go to the company and financial we're going to go to the profit and loss by class profit and loss by class gives us those nice subcategories from 010120 to 123120 and here we have the profit and loss by class job 14 15 and 16 and you'll note you always want to be scanning this unclassified area because if i look in this unclassified area anything that has that's in the job cost section should be applied to a job that's what that's what's great about it and anything that's that's not in the job cost section will just go into the unclassified so anything that's in the cost of goods sold should be assigned to a job should not be unclassified so i could say oh there's something got messed up and it's easy to fix then i can i can un undo this and say well that 120,000 that should be classified i know it should it's got to go somewhere because it's a cost of goods sold type of account so i'm going to double click on it and then just change this i'm going to double click on this and say yep i didn't classify that 120 where should it go obviously job number 16 so i'm going to say job number 16 and then i can say save and close and yes and then go back out of it and then i scan the unclassified area and there's nothing there meaning everything is, is assigned out properly so that's a nice check that you have right there and it's easy to go back in and just and just fix the problem if you see something that's not properly classified within here so then again if we look at the cost of goods sold for this current time period we're at the uh, 568 that's going to be basically our, our profit and loss statement if i go back to our excel sheet that's the 568 here to reconcile to the all the open jobs i need to include the beginning balances the way to do that is i'm simply going to extend the date range to 2019 and now i've got the extended date range so that job 14 and 15 have all the jobs that are included in them all the amounts so now it's at the 171 the 280 that adds up to the uh, 651 so we've got the 171 the 280 all of those jobs add up to that 651 then we could do the same reconciling entry so if i this is what's in the trial balance as of the current year and these are the beginning balances and how do i find those beginning balances on the job report we we run this for 2019 12 31 1 9 and we see the beginning balances at that 83,000. that's what we would need in order to kind of reconcile to do any period end adjusting entries so that's going to be that report so let's take it back to the current period if i go to 010120 to 12 31 uh, two zero. That's the the current period report. What we have added is the direct labor. The direct labor is going to be broken out by class. Notice it's in the subcategory under direct labor, which is under the the category of the type, which is cost of goods sold. If we double click on any of those items, we'll see the detail within it. Double clicking on that that takes us back to our checks. And remember that it's really the the class here that's driving this not the customer all, all we're doing with the customer is we're going to make it billable to help us make the invoice at the end